Oh, you do! Guys, this video is so much <laughs> Hello guys, and good morning. September 5th today, which is crazy. We're already five days into September and I haven't even heard an elk bugle yet. Funny thing is, a lot of people on Instagram are out hunting elk and a lot of people are actually getting into the elk bugling and all that and I just, the first few days I was out, there was no bugles whatsoever. From what I saw, the cows and spikes were still together. The big bulls uh, that came in on camera were either alone with other elk, so yeah, I don't know. Every area seems to be a little different. Where we're at in Idaho is honestly, it's almost like a desert. They're not very active, but today is just back to the city life for about half a day, and I will eventually get packed up and head out to elk camp. I'm gonna meet up with Casey, meet up with Logan, so hopefully those guys are getting ready. I gotta take the four-wheeler out of the pickup truck, get it on the jumping jack, and basically do all that kind of stuff before I can leave. Let's go check the mailbox. Empty. No mail. But anyways, guys, I don't know. I'll be just kind of running around doing chores again. Wish I had something more excited. Maybe we can get into the elk for you. Tonight, I'm doing my daily routine, which is go to the gym. I gotta go to Eagle Eye later to check out those windbreakers. I'm excited to show you guys that. For now, I'm just gonna go work out. Guys, welcome back. Central Oregon on a different Stillwater today. Captain Chael still in place. Brown dog on his bed. In the Crager, we are uh, targeting trout species. Rainbow. Rainbows. Cranebows. Cranebows. In a um, very top secret spot. <laughs> it's a beautiful day though. We are uh, kind of midday, so we're going to fish a little midday evening session. Stripping some various articulating flies. Probably going to be protocol number one. And then potentially mixing it up under an indicator. We'll see how that goes. But one of the prettier places I've ever fished. Good company. Light winds out of the northwest, approximately one to two miles per hour. Anyways, if any luck, we'll have more action than we had previously, so stick around, we'll see what happens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody's happy. He's been waiting all day. Hey, hey, that's enough. That's enough. Craig, seen this sucker yet, Craig? No. I saw him. Stop. Brown dog doing what brown dog does best. Yeah. Getting excited, it has been slow. So we did miss two fish, I guess. Did you notice that he didn't, fly, he didn't fire off till I grabbed the net? Yeah. Then he knows it's serious. He knows what's up. All right, let's see. You want to get behind me? Uh -huh. Remember the ankle line down. I t Craig, I told you I'd take you to my honey hole. It's five X. Is it really? Yeah. I'm a little worried about the anchor line, dude. Unless you can keep him over here. Here, go back up front. It's okay. You always give me your flies. Well, I've been guiding. I just guided you into this fish, so. <laughs> I'll take all the credit, actually. Alright, here, all right, here we go. I'm here. Alright, here we go. I'm here. Totally Get down on that beast. Don't force it. That five X. Some, you lose some. That is a heartbreaker. That was a nice fish, but so close. Do what you did, but just a little bit better. Just, just a little better. That's what my parents always told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is an absolute heartbreak. That was a nice fish. We've been out here for a while going at it. Not a lot of luck. We saw that fish though, so that's a plus. He was a tank, which makes it sting a little bit more. But we're gonna get we're gonna get one. Nobody's more disappointed than Brown Dog. Huh, buddy? He just wanted to give it a little kiss. Huh, bub? Made it to Eagle Eye. Really excited to go check these windbreakers, see how they turned out. Casey's in Idaho. I'm pretty sure BMAC is in Oregon. So we will be doing a video chat or FaceTime or something like that so we can all get a look at the new windbreakers. But I'm trying them on for a fitting. It sounds like they run a little small. So we'll get in here and check them out. Where is everybody? 
That's them, huh? This is it. Look at that, guys. The windbreakers fold up into their own pocket. They're so lightweight. So she was telling me this one is more like a small, right? This is a medium that she yeah, said. Yeah, she was saying they were like a size off, she thought. So check it out, guys. We are producing two colorways. There's the black with the olive hit, the camo pocket. This is just a sample of the camo. I think we're gonna run it a little different on the final product. And then this one is like a two-tone, you know, like a earth tones and then with the orange highlights. I know this band, she said, was the color was off, so we're gonna fix that to match the zipper. But those are pretty sweet. I'm gonna try them on. So I'm gonna try this one on. Like I said, she said it was a large, but she thought it fit more like a medium, so she was gonna make some changes to the size scale. That is more like a medium. It is already tied around my waist. There's yeah. not much to play with there, but the design sure is nice. It's pretty comfortable. Guys, we did really well with our uh, windbreakers last season. You guys crushed it. If you guys enjoyed those ones, you'll really like these. There's a lot of fine detail. Like, I don't know if you'll see it, but it, it's stamped with hush on those. That's super cool. And this is a custom design that we kind of helped design and played with a bunch of different layouts and templates until we chose this one. So yeah, I like it. Like a little bungee hood. A little elastic up there. Hmm. I'd say, I'd say it's great, but yeah, I'd say that's probably a medium. These are just samples. The next run will be marketing pieces. <clears throat> They'll do a run for us that we can wear, get pictures with, and some marketing materials. But that's gonna be the small, she said. This is a little snug. <laughs> the colorway is kind of cool though, huh? That turned out good, don't you think? Yeah, I like that one better actually. Do you? Yep. Personally, I'm a black guy, so I'm wearing. <laughs> so yeah, that's fun. This is going to be cool. I'm going to get the guys on either a FaceTime or a video chat uh, to show them how they fit. Once we all agree on cut and sizes, like I said, the next run will be the marketing material. And hopefully by the time you guys watch this video, they're up on the website. We're shooting for like a Black Friday launch. So if you guys see this on the video, you want to pick up a windbreaker, check them out on the website. Of course, gethushin.com. But I'm going to get the guys on a chat, and then I got to race home to pack up for the hunt. Oh, he's a slab. Get a net, get a net, get a net, get a net. I got a freaking breeze right here. <laughs> If that's not classic shale, I don't know what is. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that's literally the story of his life uh, when a camera is rolling. Only when the that's camera fish. is rolling. That's fish. That was a good one. It's all right. Every time, dude. Every time. Good hey. fish, buddy. Good we'll fish. Yep. Good fish. He's got a little more. Whoa. <laughs> At least he's gonna give us a show. Good <laughs> job. That's called hand lining. He's a feisty fatty. Oh, nice fish. Woo! Good Bye. job, buddy. Redemption. Not the one we're looking for, but. Two on the board. She'll do. That fish you lost spawned that fish last week. So. <laughs> well, it took a lot longer. Well, I shouldn't say that. I know this stuff always takes a lot of time, longer than you plan for. But I'm all packed up. I just hit the grocery store here in Tremont in Utah. Got the four-wheeler loaded up on the jumping jack. Got the Yeti chuck full of ice and food. And then the camp chef and all the other goodies. Sounds like Casey and Logan are gonna beat me out to camp. If I get out there in time, we might be able to put a last minute evening hunt on. But I've gotta to get to camp first and find them. They just told me they'd be up the canyon. I don't know exactly where they're gonna be, just gotta, Casey just said, come find us. So that's the goal, finally. Oops. Hopefully if I get there in time, we can put together a an evening hunt. But we're gonna be pushing it for time. There's. Unfortunately, the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. This is my new signature transition. 
Welcome, welcome to Elk Camp, Idaho, 2018. As you can see, or if you can't see, let me explain. We are literally setting up these canvas cutters in cattle beds, uh, hence piles of cattle crap. That's what's great about these is you don't need much. I just cleared me a little flat spot to roll this thing out. So, home away from home. Done. We're just making a bonsai trip out here real quick for tonight, tomorrow, and then we gotta go back. We just found the closest spot because we're running a little bit late. We're just waiting for Eric to get out here because see he's the one that has the tag. Hola. Dude, I've got them all tied up to a tree. So, this is a home away from home for the next couple days. If we don't kill an elk, we'll have to eat juniper berries, which aren't bad. I was telling Logan on the way out here, elk are supposed to be grazers. So they're supposed to eat grass and stuff growing on the ground. And browsers eat trees and bushes and seeds. But when we were in New Mexico a few years ago, me and Eric, we noticed the elk were always had their head in these juniper trees. And what we came to find out, they were eating these berries. So I think all scientists are completely wrong. Elk are just hungry animals that will eat anything they need to or anything they can. Okay? And so if elk can eat them, I think we can eat them. Has this been a really good interview? I feel like it hasn't. But we're going to go with it. Logan's shaking his head no. Wow, thanks for the confidence. We are in the uh, desert, so water is a necessity out here. Can I just make a recommendation? I was never a camelback guy or a platypus guy, you know, which means basically water that's very easily ready to drink. I was always a water bottle guy in the bottom of my bag. I guess there's two trains of thoughts to this. You guys let me know what you think. So Eric is like, man, if I have access to my water, I'm always drinking it. And when I, when I get to where I'm at, I'm out of water. I'm like, that's true. But man, you feel so much better when you're hiking. When you get to that point where you're super hot and thirsty and you don't really have time to like set your pack down, if you're just taking consistent drinks off, off of your platypus, Eric's way of thought is, man, I just don't want to drink all my water. And if it's there, I will. But what I think happens is when you have access to your water and you're just taking necessary drinks along the way, you're never just like get so dehydrated or so hot that you just pound water bottles. You're just consistently drinking, which I don't know. You guys let me know what you think, but I think it is most clutch to have a platypus or a bladder of some sort because man when you're hiking and you get to that point and you take a couple sips of water it's just like rejuvenating you can just tell your body is in dire needs just dropping some knowledge bombs on you guys today so just this just be a diy video name this video casey's most important tech tips where's the lid don't third tech tip don't lose your lid you take it when you're in the market for buying one of these get one where the uh cap just stays on the end because then you think you lost it but then you're just like lol it's right there so i was loling right there I'd say this place needs a little bit of water. Look at that. Feels way worse back there, but I got the four-wheeler loaded. Like you guys saw, the jumping jack is bouncing around. I'm surprised that thing's still up there, but I got four tie downs on it. Just keeping an eye on it. Logan and Casey are just up the canyon, so I'll be there in about 10 minutes. And if we can find enough time, we'll race up the hill and try to do some glassing. But uh, it's not looking good to put an effective hunt on there tonight but you never know i've done that before where i'm like i'm just gonna go on this hill on glass next thing you know i'm spotting and stocking a bowl so there's always a chance looks like i found camp looks like they're gone they have glass in or what's the deal hello backpacks here shades are here camping stuff's here hello <laughs> They're bedding up with the cattle. Nice. Look at all that hot stuff. If I can hurry, might be able to get out and do some glassing myself. Camera stuff. 
Got on my first light in here. I'm gonna put some clothes on and get up the hill. Potentially off the snide. Can I chill? Yeah. <coughs> brown dog's happy. That's all that matters to me is I got I just wanted to make the brown dog happy. Alright. Not the big guy that we're looking for. Still a pretty trout. Super pretty trout. They're all natural in this fishery. They don't stalk this, so. Brown dog is just eyeballing him. Yeah. Huh, buddy? Dang, it's pretty out here. Yeah, nice. Beautiful evening of fishing. All right, guys, it is just about bedtime. I'm gonna get the last few things I'm gonna take into the trailer. Let me go show you the jumping jack setup that I've got going on. Welcome home. 
I've got my bed over here set up as you can see got the memory foam pillow nice big old flannel double wide sleeping bag we enjoyed a nice dinner here on the table and then I've got some gear um, one thing I'm gonna do tonight real quick is actually swap out my backpack so you guys know I have always used the horn hunter pack for years I'm gonna switch to this exo uh, mountain pack and honestly this pack gets the job done the one thing the only one thing right now I'm a little uh, frustrated with is how squeaky it is if you watch the videos of me and that backpack you can hear it squeaking so I'm gonna try this one tomorrow give that a try and uh, we're gonna get some sleep here soon these guys are all set up in their canvas cutters let me show you you inside there I'm in the cocoon what do you got what's your light in there uh, my headlamp I don't know if you noticed as soon as I step under the cedar tree it's super warm it is dude it's not like the open air over by the camp chef so there's Casey he's going to bed there's Logan set up he's probably doing files he's always doing files over here doing star shots are you yeah I'm trying he's doing some star photography or video star photography no way how cool I'm trying just gotta get this thing set up right you ready for the morning uh I think so Everything's packed and ready to go. Well guys, that's a wrap from elk camp. Super excited for the morning, especially after seeing a big mature bull. So we're looking forward to the morning. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited to have Casey and Logan back in camp. I just watched some footage from Born and Raised Land of the Free 2.0 project. They got some killer footage. Super, super cool. I just saw it for the first time. So excited to share that with you guys. Ooh. Lots of bugs. We're gonna get in a position tomorrow where we think those elk might be crossing. Try to get ahead of them. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying this series, please let us know. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, guys. It helps us out a ton. If you're looking for any uh, new merch, like I said before, it's just gethushin.com. Thanks again. Hope you guys are having a lot of fun out there and hope you're enjoying this series. We'll see you in the morning. Oh, yeah.